It's the land of luck and skill where the stakes are high. Nevada for CBS Sports next stop on the Pro Bowlers Tour. We're live at the Showboat Hotel, Casino, and Bowling Center for the 1999 Showboat Invitational. Hello, everyone. I'm Gary Seibel, along with PBA Hall of Famer Marshall Holman. Well, it's the longest-running stop on the PBA Tour, and Marshall, some of the greatest names in the game have won this event. Well, Gary, in the 39 previous Showboat Invitationals, 20 Hall of Famers have won this tournament. Now, four of them have won it twice. First, Ski Ferenski did it, and then the last one to do it, Walter Ray Williams Jr. Now, Dave Houston, he won in 1995, and in 1990, he got lucky. Beat some guy named Holman. Well, this is the town you want to get lucky in. Besides, you've won your share. And today, another future Hall of Famer looks to win this tournament for the second time. Top seed, Parker Bone III. And after taking last week off and disappointing second place finishes at the Masters and Touring Players Championships, Parker Bone III once again showcased his superior talent en route to the number one seed for the third time this season. And Bone will take on the winner of our shootout consisting of second seeded Amleto Monticelli, who got here by taking advantage of his strong release and cool mental demeanor. Our third seed is Randy Peterson, whose high backswing and great down lane projection served him well this week. And the fourth seed is Danny Wiseman. Now, he's a power stroker who makes a habit out of coming through in the clutch. And the winner of today's Showboat Invitational receives $24,000 as the first prize check. We're set to begin the shootout round, and Randy Peterson from Hollywood, Florida, a right-hander, is up first. 6'2", 195 pounds, 37 years old. And Randy Peterson on the approach for his first shot in the first frame of the shootout round. Peterson knocks them all down in the first. Randy had some problems. Randy had problems during the practice, but able to get it done in the first frame. So great opening shot for Peterson. And Leto Monticelli now on the approach. Also 37 years old, like Peterson. From Barquisimeto, Venezuela. The hard-cranking Amleto Monticelli likes to throw the ball with more hooks, standing a little further left on the approach, setting the ball wide, coming back into the pocket. And now Danny Wiseman. He's from Baltimore. He's a right-hander as well. 5'9", 165 pounds. 12 years as a pro. Seven national titles for Wiseman. Almost the friendly roll of the two pin. Ball went a little bit long. Wiseman's got to be satisfied with buying. just leaving one pin. Wasn't his best shot. Wiseman averaging 239 on our TV pair today. Our tournament format this week, normally we bowl 42 games. Now at the Touring Players Championship, 64. That's a lot of games. This week at the Showboat, 56 games. Still a lot of endurance needed. And here is Randy Peterson once again. Second frame, Peterson and Monticelli starting out with strikes. Wiseman with a spare in the first. Peterson opens with a double in the shootout round. Demonstrative energy from Randy Peterson today. And once again, Monticelli. 
in the second. He's also working on a strike. Amleto Monticelli won the Showboat Invitational in 1988 and lost in the title match last year to Jason Couch. Headpin goes to the sideboard right in front of the 10 pin, a messenger shot that he really thought was going to fall. Can't believe it. Of our four bowlers today, Monticelli with 18 PBA titles. That's second just to top seed, Parker Bone the third. And Monticelli converts in a second, so he begins with a strike and a spare. Danny Wiseman had a 300 game this week. There were several, Marshall, the scores were high. Yeah, scores were high this week, combination of the, we watch his ball roll into the pocket, getting another strike. He starts out, spare strike. Danny Wiseman, four-step approach, over the 10 board, swings the ball out. Here it comes back into the pocket. Very solid, methodical player. With his two strikes, Peterson 10 pins up on both Monticelli and Wiseman as we head into the third frame of the shootout round. Important for Peterson to get off to a fast start. He feeds on his own emotion. Confidence. Peterson with the slowest foot speed of all of our players, uses that long backswing, Look at that great projection down the lane. Really close to finish. Once again, Monticelli working on a spare. Good week in match play for Monticelli. And fortunate just to leave the two in the eight pins, Gary. Ten pin fell right at the last, having a little bit of problems. That ball was a little bit left off his hand. Caught too much of the lane oil going down the lane. Wasn't able to make the move back into the pocket. Amleto Monticelli, the only player to be inducted into the PBA Hall of Fame, an international player to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. That was in 1997. And he's got the 2-8 sleeper to pick up. And he goes with the hook for the shot. The 2-8, the ball has to cover both the pins. He went for the power to pick it up. Single pin spares, traditionally, you just want to throw it hard and straight. Monticelli, 22 points, 22 pins behind. Danny Wiseman down 20, and he'll look to cut into Peterson's lead right now, looking to pick up a double. Solid 10 pin for Wiseman. Six goes right around the 10 pin. He knows the great shot. Certainly disappointment for Wiseman. Trying to make that 20-pin deficit a 10. It remains a 20 with a spare here in the third frame. Wiseman will convert in the third, but it's Randy Peterson up in the shootout round. Welcome back to Las Vegas. Time now for the Friday night recap where the position round determined who made today's TV finals. And Randy Peterson got things going early last night, the third game, Friday night. He shoots 300, secures his position in the top four. And then Danny Wiseman in the 10th frame with a final game last night. He needed this strike to make it to today's telecast. Parker Bone the third set a 56-game PBA scoring record this week, and Amleto Monticelli also had a great tournament in match play. And here's a look at the tournament stat pack. A field of 117 bowlers started the Showboat Invitational this year, and 300 games, 13 of them, two by Chris Barnes. John Zimmerman is the Chief Operating Officer here at the Showboat Hotel, Casino and Bowling Center, and his staff has once again done a marvelous job with this year's tournament. He's been a great host. Good work. Randy Peterson up by 22 over Monticelli, 20 over Danny Wiseman on the strength of three strikes to begin the shootout round. Peterson starts things off in the fourth frame. Looking for his first tournament win in four years. 
simply short off his hand, did not get the proper projection, too much lift. He leaves the four pin, the six pin, the seven, and the nine. Starting out the week, Peterson 58th and worked his way up to make it to today's championship round. And Peterson just takes the count, getting eight. A look at Monticelli's tournaments here in the spring summer portion for CBS. A couple of thirds, Empire State Open, Johnny Petraglia Open as well, and then falling off after that. But a good start to the spring summer tour for Monticelli. He's looking to get back on track. And Peterson has led both Wiseman and Monticelli back into this match. And Leto coming in high on lane 55, fortunate just to leave the, just to leave the 10 pin. This ball is going right through the heart. The four and the seven knocked down just at the very end. Almost a friendly roll for the 10, but he's got to be happy just to leave that. And Monticelli will convert in the fourth frame. Well, coming up next will be live third round coverage of the Memorial Tournament presented by Marsh and McLennan. And after two rounds, Tiger Woods, he's in double digits, under par, 10 under, U.S. Open champ Lee Jansen just one stroke behind. And now up in the fourth frame, Danny Wiseman working on a spare. He's just two pins down to Randy Peterson. And Monticelli has also cut into that lead due to the open by Peterson. The messenger for Danny Wiseman. Watch the head pin. It's going to come over. He loves it. And now Peterson will begin the fifth frame. Coming off the open. Looking to get a little help from the messenger, Marshall. Didn't happen. Ten pin stands. And for Peterson, really in the practice, I was watching him over the last 45 minutes or so, had much better luck on lane 56. That's the lane he just left the big split on. So he's figured out 55. He needs to find 56 again. Well, access all the latest information on the PBA by checking out the PBA's website at www.pbatour.com. The site, sponsored by Brunswick, features the latest news, tournament standing stats, and scheduled live chats with the pros. Here's Monticelli in the fifth. Peterson converted the spare. Monticelli down by five pins to Peterson. Not anymore. There's a strike for Monticelli. see a nice low profile angle of Monticelli ball rolling down the lane going to about the foreboard hooking back in dead solid perfect Monticelli concentrating thinking about the next shot not worrying about what his opposition is doing Wiseman not having a great spring summer tour he's had he's had some problems with his timing and rhythm got some help from his coach here in Las Vegas Bill Hall and now he's on championship round telecast today and with the strike there he takes the lead Eight pins over Peterson, 13 over Monticelli. Shot. So Peterson, who started out with three consecutive strikes and opened and a spare, now needs to get back into that strike zone. And important to regroup on the lane. He threw the big split on. Much better shot down the lane. Was able to get the ball to go further down the lane before it made its big break into the pocket. Satisfaction for Peterson as he sees that shot go over once again. Danny Wiseman, the leader now in Monticelli, 13 down to Wiseman. Another solid 10 for Amleto Monticelli. There goes the six pin right around the bottom of the 10. Monticelli's reaction, the eyes are looking. Can't believe it. And Gary, it's the angle of the way the ball goes into the pocket that determines whether you get nine on a pocket shot or ten. Monticelli needs to adjust the way the ball is entering the pocket. In the sixth frame, Danny Wiseman is up. And Wiseman has put together a string of three strikes. He is the leader, 18 over Randy Peterson.
Today's trip down memory lane takes us back to the 1980 Showboat Invitational where Wayne Webb was nearly perfect, shooting a 278 in the title match to defeat Mark Roth. That win helped propel Webb to Player of the Year honors. And you know, only three bowlers have ever won Player of the Year honors three straight years. Walter Ray Williams Jr. was the last Earl Anthony did it a couple of times. And Walter Ray Williams Jr. almost made our championship round today, finishing 10th in this year's Showboat Invitational. Through six frames, Danny Wiseman now our leader, taking over that role from Randy Peterson. He's got 18 pins on Peterson, 23 on Monticelli. And Peterson is on the approach for the seventh frame. Gary can cut 10 pins off his lead with a spike here on lane 55. That's what Randy's looking for. Much better shot. He wants a little noise out of these people. Say, come on. Don't you like that shot? Peterson's certainly one of the more animated players on the tour. Amleto gets worked up. Monticelli every now and then as well. He is bowling in the seventh frame, and he is trailing in the shootout round, not only to De Danny Wiseman, but also to Randy Peterson. Strike in the seventh frame for Monticelli. He's the only one of the competitors that has not thrown a double yet. And Leto Monticelli, the high backswing, opens up his shoulders quite a bit, but look at the way he squares them up right at the bottom of the swing. Here's Danny Wiseman, and Marshall, Danny's TV winning percentage is the best amongst active touring pros. Why do you think that is? Well, as he leaves a four pin on lane 55, the reason he's able to do so good on television is he has a good down the lane trajectory. Doesn't throw a big hook. This ball comes in just ever so slightly high, leaving the four pin. Terrible. Yeah, he said it. Our leader right now, Danny Wiseman, converts the spare nice in the shot, seventh frame. For well, in-depth sports coverage with late breaking news, live scores, oh, exclusive oh, columns, God. and more, go to cbs.sportsline.com or on America Online, enter keyword CBS Sportsline. The crowd here at the showboat chanting Randy. They'd like to see him come back. This one for the lead, has to hold. <sighs> Virtually the same shot that Randy threw in the fourth frame. He snatched on that ball a little bit, just caught it early. And it's an open frame for Randy Peterson. Right when he had the opportunity to get back into the match, actually take the lead. Monticelli having a respectable year in 1999. Had some problems earlier on, has corrected those, some physical problems, sciatic nerve. Hurt his shoulder, but he is bowling well again. Monticelli now with two strikes and Danny Wiseman. The leader by 12 over Monticelli. Now Peterson, who had the early lead, is down by 22 pins. And Wiseman working on a spare. Came in a little high last time. Now he comes in high in lane 56. Similar fate to what's happened to Randy Peterson on that lane. This ball left off his hand. Does not get the direction down the lane. 3, 6, 10 remain. And a spare that has many ways to miss it. Very difficult spare. Needs to, get, needs to get the ball in between the three and the six pin. So Wiseman converts the spare to maintain his lead in the shootout round with through eight frames now. And Wiseman is up by only nine pins over Monticelli, who's working on a couple of strikes. And Randy Peterson down by 19. Peterson with the chance if he strikes here in the ninth and out in the tenth. She's 217. There's the first part of it. And he has to finish on that bad lane, on the lane 56. The one is giving him trouble. Two wide open splits for Peterson. He'll return to that lane one more time. Now Monticelli. His high game this week, 285. Pulled consistently. 
throughout this year's Showboat Invitational. Monticelli certainly in the driver's seat, especially if he can strike here. That ball's very wide, but coming back, 10 pins down. First time in the match, Monticelli takes the lead. Look how much the ball hooks over the nine board. It's all the way out to one, Gary, but it's coming back strong, and the 10 pin is taken care of. And now each one of our bowlers in the shootout round at one point of this match has had the lead. First it was Randy Peterson, then Danny Wiseman, now Amleto Monticello. And a good shot, make a good shot, and get hosed. There's our friend, the ringing 10-pin, our certainly not Danny Wiseman's friend right now. And Wiseman feeling that even though he made a good shot, he didn't get the luck here in Las Vegas. Now, ball not coming in quite on the right angle. Six-pin going around the bottom of the 10th, and he converts. Wiseman with the opportunity to shoot 225. Peterson, the best he can do, 217. And Bruno Monticelli certainly controlling his own fate. He can strike out for 237. Slim two-pin lead now for Danny Wiseman as he jumps back on top. And for Peterson, a clean release on 56. That's what he needs. He snatched a couple shots, got them left. That ball's got a hold as well. Three shots on lane 56. Through the nose and three splits. Let's get to split once. Possible? Randy's got to feel a little unlucky right now. Three balls through the nose, three splits. You think you might break down one of them? Not to be for Peterson. Finish. Randy Peterson having problems on lane 56 has finished out with a 185. And for Monticelli, Strike on the first ball, nine spare. That'd be 226. That would shut out Wiseman. Can he get the first one? Ringing 10 almost gets a messenger coming back. Boy, we've seen a lot of ringing 10s on that lane 55. Wants to get the ball over the second arrow. Ball actually a little inside the target, but it's making the move back. But there's the 10 pin. Six pin around the bottom of it. We talk about the, the proper angle going into the pocket. It has to do with getting the good break point. The ball has to start breaking earlier on these lanes in order to carry. He makes the 10 pin, but boy, just barely. He feels very fortunate to have made that 10 pin. Well, as you said, Marshall, he needed a strike and a spare. Did not pick up the strike. His first shot in the 10th frame and did not shut out Danny Wiseman. He strikes on this ball. He'll force Wiseman to get two strikes in the 10th. If he gets nine, we could have a tie. There's all of them down. Wiseman needs two strikes. Danny Wiseman. Two strikes and two pins for the victory in the shootout round of this year's showboat. You know, we've talked about it earlier, his great record on television. Here's a chance to improve on it right here in the 10th frame. Feels very confident with his game now. And Amleto Monticelli will be our winner in the shootout round. CBS Sports coverage of the 1999 Showboat Invitational will continue after this message and a word from your local station. Welcome back to the Showboat Invitational, where Amleto Monticelli has won the shootout round by three pins over Danny Wiseman and now has earned the right to take on that man, top seed. Parker Bone the third championship match coming up shortly. But coming up next week, we'll continue our West Coast swing. We'll be in Tucson, Arizona. Golden pin lanes for the Tucson Open. 
Then we'll travel to Reno, Nevada for the National Bowling Stadium Open and close it all out here on CBS with the AC Delco All-Star Classic at Cal Bowl in Lakewood, California. In addition to today's four finalists, 20 other bowlers made match play this week. Finishing fifth, 87 Rookie of the Year, Ryan Schaefer missed the championship round by 11 pins. 16-time PBA titleist Norm Duke, who went down to defeat as the top seed last week in the Oregon Open, he finished number nine. Justin Romek, winner of the 1994 U.S. Open, made a charge during the second round of match play, but could not sustain it through the third round, finished 13th. Number 19, Chris Barnes, defending PBA Rookie of the Year, and winner of last year's Oregon Open. Barnes has two victories on the tour this year. And at number 21, Pete Couture, the senior PBA Player of the Year in 1998, returned to the national tour on the heels of his 54th birthday this week and turned in a solid performance. Well, you know, oftentimes a PBA championship match comes down to the last shot. How do the pros handle the pressure? Here's Marshall Holman with our tip of the week. Whether you're bowling anchor for your league team or on national television like the PBA pros, every bowler will eventually run into a pressure situation where the result of the match comes down to one shot. Now, joining us today to talk about how he handles the pressure is the reigning PBA Rookie of the Year, Chris Barnes. Chris, nice to have you with us. Great to be here, Marshall. Chris, now how do you handle the pressure? Well, pressure causes many people to tense up or to squeeze the ball. The key is to release enough of that tension so that you can allow yourself to make that one great shot. A trick taught to me by Dr. Eric Lasser of Team USA combines visualization and breathing. The key is to breathe in for a count of four, hold it for four, and then let that tension out for four. After this, visualize the perfect shot. Remember, though, nothing beats experience. And next time you're in a pressure situation, give Chris's techniques a try. Thanks, Chris. Well, we will take a breather and soon find out how, who will handle the pressure best on this day. The championship match between Amleto Monticelli and top seed Parker Bone III is coming up next. Welcome back to Las Vegas, where the stakes are high. We are live and getting set for the championship match of the 1999 Showboat Invitational coming up in just a moment. Marshall, so far, six tournaments on the CBS Spring Summer Tour. No number one seed has won. Why? Well, the number one seed has been having trouble, and as I said earlier, it has a lot to do with their mental ability to forget about the past. Now, you can see that the second seed has won twice, the third seed has won four times. Whoever makes it through the shootout has been the champion. But this week, Amleto Monticelli only shot 216. He didn't look like he was really lined up. Didn't look like he knew exactly where he wanted to throw the ball. So for Parker Bone, if he can bowl a solid game, I feel he has a very good chance this week. And Monticelli will begin the championship match of the Showboat Invitational. Squeaking out a victory in the shootout round over Danny Wiseman, Monticelli opens up the championship match with a strike. Parker Bone the third has had a very good spring summer tour, a win in the Empire State Open, a couple of seconds in the Masters and the Touring Players Championship in Marshall. Those two second place finishes most recently came from the top seed. Parker looking for a friendly roll off the off the sideboard. The messenger does not get back to take care of the seven pin. And that's what we were talking about earlier. Bad to the bone, yes, but that first seed has not been good to Parker Bone the third. Now, it hasn't been good to him, Gary, but that is where everybody wants to be. You always want to be the top seed. You're ensured of being into the title match. Parker Bone right where he needs to be. And his win on the spring summer tour of the Empire State Open coming from the third seed, which has been the most successful so far. Bones high game of 300 this week. Right now, 290, the best he can do. There's the strike on lane 55. Trying to get the emotions up for Parker. Important for him to feel like he's got a real good, solid opportunity today. Monticelli opened up the championship match with a strike. He's on the approach in the second frame on lane 56, which he had 
some problems on in the shootout round. Right? He did. The confidence. Look at that ball. That was on the channel. That ball was right on the edge. Take a look at this. There it's on the one board. Is it going to stay up? Well, you saw it did. And the reaction of a very surprised Emblemo Monticelli. The surprise Marshall Holman as well. <laughs> and not much surprises you. Monticelli up by 10 pins over Bone early in the second frame as we move on to the third. For another 10 pins. Strike in the third frame. Three in a row for a metal Monticelli. Takes advantage of the great break he had on lane 56. Sandwiches that shot in between two great ones on 55. Monticelli with the first three now in the championship match. You know, even though Parker Bone has lost his last three matches as the tournament leader, he has had a tremendous amount of success here at the showboat, including doubles events. He's made eight telecasts at the showboat with a win, three seconds, three thirds, and yeah. either a first or a second today. And now Bone's got a couple of strikes. Cutting that lead from 20 down to 10. Parker Bone, familiar look. Right back in the match. Strike here in the fourth frame. With that little Monticelli. Marshall, the squares have been high here all week. Looks like we're starting out that way in the championship match. And Bone does come through with a strike. Now he's got three in a row. And now the pressure is back on him, little Monticelli. Monticelli averaged 235 on lanes 55 and 56, where we're bowling today's Showboat Invitational Final. Although Bone with a 252 average on these lanes. That ball not quite as far to the right. That's where he wants to throw the ball, Gary. That ball got to about the, about the two board. It didn't go over the edge. Starts out around the ninth board. There it is. It's on the second, coming back flush into the pocket, taking care of all 10 pins. And it's important, it's important certainly to strike, but to do it in a confident manner. That shot in the second frame had to scare Monticelli. That one right there in the fourth, he loved. Two great bowlers you're looking at. Between them, 37 PBA titles. 19 for Parker Bowen the third, 18 for Amleto Monticelli. Got a little slow with the speed. Ball hooked early on him. Leaves the three pin and the six pin. Eight pin lead for Amleto Monticelli. Hard and straight in between the two pins. He picks it up, textbook. Monticelli converts and Parker Bone the third and Amleto Monticelli have only met once before in a title match. Bone picked up the victory. He leads that series 1-0, the only meeting back in 1993. So a little bit of an edge right now for Parker Bone the third. And that includes the pins. Eight pin lead over Amleto Monticelli right now. Oh my, what a disastrous frame for Parker. He leaves the the two, the four, the seven, and the nine. The ball simply came in light, did not get enough of the pocket. He knows it's bad right there, and oh, give me a break, he's gotta be saying. You know, Parker was down by eight pins going into that frame, Gary. Now you can make this, you need to get the ball over to the right-hand side of the two pin, hooking. If it's hooking past the two pin, got a chance to make it. He's going for it, doesn't get far enough over, just gets nine. Now certainly opened the door for Amleto Monticelli. Now puts him up by 24 pins. Let's take a look at that try by, Mon or by Bone to pick up the split. Doesn't get it done. And got to forget about it. For that man, he's got to be feeling pretty, pretty good. Monticelli, back-to-back -back PBA Player of the Year honors, 1989 and 1990. And the seven left for Parker Bone. And Parker Bone, who is in the driver's seat for Player of the Year in 1999, would dearly love to win another tournament. 
to extend his lead over Chris Barnes. And Boone converts in the sixth frame. But it's Amleto Monticelli who's in the driver's seat right now on the Showboat Invitational. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back to the Showboat Invitational where Amleto Monticelli has a 24-pin lead over Parker Bone the third in the championship match. A look at Parker Bone the third can't be very happy with the way things are going right now, but has to be happy with the fact that Marshall, he's going to pass you today in career earnings. Well, there we are. He's going to pass me, but he hasn't passed me yet. I still got him for the next couple of minutes. For about the next 15 minutes, you'll be one spot in front of Parker Bone the third. Of course, Amleto Monticelli has already passed you in career earnings, and he is up on the approach right now for his first shot in the sixth. Coming in ever so high, just a little bit, leaving the four pin. That's the lane that's really been good to Amleto. Had the shot to the second frame, looked like it was going, going to go off into the channel, but it stayed up and struck. That one, four pin, hard and straight, shouldn't have any problem. And Monticelli converts. Well, next week we're going to be in Tucson, Arizona for the Tucson Open. It's Golden Pin Lanes, and we'll be on it Saturday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Tucson Open coming up next week on CBS Sports. Monticelli, 23 pins over Parker Bone the third as we begin the seventh frame. Seventh frame in the championship match of the Showboat Invitational. Just a 23-pin lead. Bone still in the match, Parker up on lane 55. Now Bone really in the match. There's the two pin, the four pin, and the seven. Looks like he came in a little light, Marshall. Well, he did come in light. Leaves the two, the four, and the 10. Needs to get the ball over to the left-hand side of the two pin. The reaction of Amleto knows it was a bad shot. Left-hand side of the two pin, slide it into the 10. Will it, oh, it overhooks. Well, that lead down to eight pins now, Gary. And the open frame by Monticelli has indeed opened the door for Parker Bone the third, who has an open frame himself back in the fifth and now has a chance to come back and regain the lead. And something about the pins Parker Bone the third didn't like. He took a re-rack, as he is allowed to do. You're allowed to have two re-racks per game. Likes the way it looks now, as he's set to throw on lane 56. Usually time when Bone smells blood is when the other player begins to falter. There's a strike for Bone. Well, in the last couple of telecasts for Parker Bone, he hasn't been able to get any good breaks going against his opposition. Today he's getting them. Bone likes the way this one looks. Can a number one seed finally win this year on the spring tour? Bone right now in the zone, and that has become a very popular phrase around the PBA, Parker Bone III, his Bone Zone fan club and website. And a strike here would put him in the lead. Will that hook? Friendly roll, light shot. Parker Bone in the eighth frame. Watch how far this ball goes to the left-hand side of the lane. Comes back in, powerful strike, knocks them all down. And a relief, Parker Bone, as he takes a deep breath Monticelli answers in the eighth frame just barely trips out that four pin to set it right now Gary Monticelli possible 242 bone possible 244 this match really going down to the wire can't get much tighter than that Parker Bone the third, looking for his 20th career title. It would mean an awful lot to him. Monticelli working on his 19th title. Needs to make an adjustment on this lane. This ball came in light last time. Not this time. Enough of the head pin. Gets the pins off the sideboard and reclaims the lead by eight pins for Monticelli. Watching it. Happy to see him go down. Just barely knocked him down. 
back and forth, back and forth. Monticelli up by eight pins. Bone just had a two-pin lead. Once again, Monticelli is on top. Got to hurry. Perfect shot for Parker Bone. That ball resting on the edge of the lane. Hook back. He's got the lead again. And Gary, he does control his whole destiny. If he can get a couple of strikes here and nine, he's the champion. Parker Bone in the ninth frame. Yeah, baby! That's what I'm talking about. Needs to get himself a little bit calm down after that shot. Sometimes you get yourself so energized that Amleto Monticelli looks on. You have to take a deep breath, calm yourself down so that you can make the best possible shot possible here in the ninth, here in the tenth frame. And that was the tip of the week. Breathing, calming down, it worked for Bone. Well, he's not calm right now. He's coming right out of his shoes. He feels like he deserves to win. Been the tournament leader in the last three tournaments he's been in. Watch this ball. Maybe a little good fortune, good luck, lady luck here in Vegas. And watch this reaction. How about that vertical jump, Gary? The hottest bowler right now on the PBA Tour, Parker Bone the third, but feeling that he has not been able to get the job done from the number one seed. This would certainly be redemption. Slower speed. That's the one. Slower speed. He was able to get the ball to hook back into the pocket. The last shot, he was overjuiced, but he was fortunate to get that friendly roll. Parker Bone with the slower ball speed. The ball flush in the pocket. And the reaction of a man who desperately wants his 20th title it means so much to Bone. The difference between being a 19-time champion and that elite group of 20-time titleists. Parker needs but nine pins to secure the victory. And Monticelli has to be sitting there thinking, just give me a chance. Give me a chance. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Got the ball too far to the right. It hooks through the nose. And Monticelli does get that chance. Gary, I wasn't sure if this ball was going to go into the channel, but it hangs on, overhooks. He leaves the four, the six, and the seven pin. That's 241. Monticelli now knows he has a chance when he sees three pins standing. He's got a possible 242. If he strikes out, he will win the championship match by one pin. Solid. 10 for Amleto Monticelli and Parker Bone, finally. Parker Bone is your winner of the 1999 Showboat Invitational, and he does it from the number one seed. So, Murray, did you hear? Welcome back for Parker Bone. The third has won the Showboat Invitational. Let's go to Marshall Holman for the check and trophy presentation. Marshall. All right, thank you very much, Gary. I'm here with B. Goodwin, Director of Bowling Operations for the Showboat with a check and trophy presentation. Thank you, Marshall. Parker, congratulations on behalf of the Showboat Hotel, Casino and Bowling Center. It's my pleasure once again to give you the trophy as a champion of the Showboat Invitational. Congratulations. Thank you, B. You know, on behalf of the PBA players, I really want to thank Showboat for all their fine support. Brunswick, thank you, and Parker and Evan, I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, Parker, you broke the jinx. You finally broke the number one jinx. How'd you do it? I'll tell you, Marshall, I, I came out of the game. I said, just make good, keep trying to hang in there. I let one slip away from me, but fortunately, I bailed it out at the end, and, uh, well, somebody was looking down on me.